Hi everyone, I'm back again cooking through Corona and this is the dinner that almost wasn't because we went to, let's see, two Walmarts, one Safeway, um, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, um, where else did we go? Is that it? And then we finally, I called Bosch's. They were the last ones on the list. And they were the only ones that had the manicotti, or as my New Yorker husband calls it, the Montegot, which is these, okay? Yeah, that's what I'm making tonight, Montegot. And this is a recipe that is so, so good. You really want to make this. You really, really do, because it makes a lot, and you can freeze it, and it comes out excellent out of the freezer or whatever. So I'm going to tell you what's in it. And I've also got a really great um, bacon and pea iceberg salad that I made um, earlier, and I'm going to tell you how to make that too, because that's what we're having with it tonight, and it's one of my favorites. Um, anyway, this is the Montegat. What you're going to do, um, first of all, is you need two boxes of manicotti shells, okay? And the first thing you do is you're going to chop a cup of um, onions, two um, cloves of garlic, and you're gonna saute them in the frying pan um, in about two tablespoons of olive oil, okay? And then you're gonna to add to that one pound of ground beef. Now, I usually cook with ground beef that's 80-20, but this is 93% lean, because you don't want, you know, you don't want this to be greasy. and it's very good. I mean, not that fat is, it doesn't taste good, but this is, it's very good. So you want to do that, add that to that. And then to that, you're going to add two teaspoons of oregano, two teaspoons of basil, and one teaspoon of sugar. You're not going to taste all the sweetness, but what the sugar does, it just kind of cuts down on the acidity of, of the sauce, all right? So I got this started because this does have to go into a 350 degree oven for an hour. And then it's gonna, and you're gonna uncover it and put it back in with mozzarella cheese on top for 10 minutes, okay? So meanwhile, while that's just simmering, um, you're going to take a 16 ounce container of regatta cheese two cups of mozzarella, shredded mozzarella, half a cup of grated uh, Parmesan, and two eggs, and you're gonna mix that all together, okay? And then you're just gonna take, um, you won't use two full boxes, so you'll have enough for another time, possibly, with only having to buy one more box, but um, you will use a box and a half pretty easily. And then you're just going to, this is the part that takes a little bit of patience, uh, but I'm telling you, it is so worth it. You guys, this is one of my favorite dishes, and I'm really excited to be making it for you guys, and also to be taking some to our friends, Judy and Dennis, and our friend Alice tonight. Alice got double duty today, because I have some leftover roast beef from lunch, so I made her a sandwich and brought her some potato salad and she said it was she was so full from the sandwich she couldn't eat the potato salad <laughs> it was it was a hefty sandwich i have to say okay so i'm kind of glad this is going to take an hour because i won't want to eat anytime real soon after that and i only ate half of my sandwich but still it was a lot okay now what you can do is if you you know if you want to divide this in another pan if you have extras um, and save some of the sauce to go over it. You can do that. Um, I just lay mine right on top of each other because these are not cooked shells, okay? So it's gonna be, you know, a very solid thing once it's all cooked. And it's, um, you're gonna love it. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. It's one of these things that you're gonna make again and again. I can't even tell you how many times I've made it and I've made it so many times that I don't even need to Look at the recipe for much, okay? 
So, there we go. I'm just showing you basically how I do it. You could also, you know, take a baggie and, and cut the tip of it and make it like a piping bag and do it like that. But, you know, I just like to make life hard on myself. <laughs> Not really, but I'm, you know, I'm just used to doing it this way, so that's not a big deal for me. So, let's see, we do have, probably pull off one more with this set. This was supposed to be a day to polish the furniture, vacuum and wash the floors. I was going to shampoo my bedroom rug. And we ended up being on a manicotti search, so <laughs> that did not happen. Okay, so that's that, okay? So now, all the ingredients um, you have in there, um, you stuff the shells, you put them in a, I sprayed this pan with cooking spray, um, and then all you're gonna do is pour um, the meat sauce over this, okay? And there's also a can, a six ounce can of tomato paste added to this um, two cups of tomato juice, just so you know. Almost forgot that part. Kind of, you know, thickens it up. Because you don't want it to be dry in this recipe, what I do is I don't add all the tomato juice at once. I do two cups of it to the beef mixture. And then after I get it all spread all over it, as such, um, I put that on that. Rinse that off, okay? And then I have two cups of reserved sauce, uh, not sauce, just the tomato juice, two cups of sauce. And you just pour that right over the top. Okay, so that's all there is to that. Now, next, you're gonna take some aluminum foil. Again, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And you're gonna put this in the oven for one hour. After the hour, you're going to take this out and you're going to put the last cup of, or more if you want it, um, of mozzarella cheese over the top. Take this off, put the mozzarella cheese over the top, cover it again, and put it back in the oven for about 10 minutes. Or you can just kind of peek at it and if it's not, um, you know, melted all the way, then you, you know, you can leave it in a little bit longer. It's kind of hard to gauge it because everybody's oven is, is different and mine tends to run a little hotter, so usually it's pretty spot on. So in this goes, for one hour. Okay, so that's all set. And now, I'm going to tell you how I made this delicious salad, okay? It's super easy. I think it took me, I don't know, 10 minutes, something like that, okay? This is what I call the bacon and pea salad. I'm just going to take the plastic wrap off so you can get a look, okay? So, you need a head of iceberg lettuce for this, and... The iceberg lettuce, I used about three quarters of it. I cut it in half and then in half on one of the other ones. And I sliced it, you know, almost like I was slicing potatoes or something. And then I turned it the other way and chopped it. So the lettuce is all chopped, okay? 
I put a layer on the bottom and on the top of that lettuce I put one cup of sour cream and one cup of mayonnaise that is mixed together okay then you spread it across the, the uh, lettuce and to that you want to sprinkle all, over that some frozen peas and bacos to cover that okay as many as you want you can eyeball it this is not like rocket science or anything okay and then you you do the same thing again you repeat the layers it's lettuce mayonnaise and uh, sour cream spread frozen peas bacos and then shredded cheddar cheese i got the mild cheddar if you like regular cheddar or i wouldn't use sharp but you know i would use um just a regular cheddar or mild this is mild and and then repeat the layer lettuce mayonnaise sour cream spread peas bacos cheese and then i just sprinkle some bacos on the top trust me on this you will love it it's delicious this was kind of like one of those salads that we used to have at family barbecues and um it was always gone it was like one of the first things gone <laughs> so good anyway so that's how you do that that's our dinner for tonight so you guys try this recipe but if you know at least think about it because you know if you're just if there's just the two of you or even if there's four of you there you'll have enough for another meal out of that and if it's just a couple of you then you know take maybe four out four more in the freezer together and four more in the freezer together because I'm telling you when you when you take them out um, they are just like they were freshly made. They come out that good, okay? So thanks for checking in. I hope you guys are having a good day and hope the sun is shining wherever you are. And I will see you again soon, actually. Tomorrow, John is going to be making his fabulous chicken marsala. So you'll get to see the other side of the cook in the family, okay? Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.